In this video, we will take a look at ChatPDF and compare it with ChatGBT, both the free and the plus version. Which one should you use? And are the free tiers enough or do you need a premium subscription? Spoiler alert, there are some significant differences that you want to keep in mind depending on what type of PDF you want to chat with, so stay tuned. My name is Florian Walter and this is the AI Tool Corner, where I review the latest AI software to find out which ones can actually improve your life and business. Let's start with the setup of each of them. Now, technically, you can use ChatGPT without even creating an account. However, when I tried to upload a PDF, even a smaller one, this didn't work. I just get an error message and nothing happens. Also, if you don't create an account, it uses the inferior 4O Mini model, which is not as good as the latest 4O model. If you create an account, even a free one, you can use the 4O model. So if you want to use ChatGPT, you should create a free account, which you can do over the sign up button. Then you get access to better models, but there are also rate limits applied for the free tier. So you have a certain amount of messages and a certain number of uploads you can do in a certain time frame. And after that, it either blocks you from doing it again or it downgrades to a cheaper model which doesn't perform as good. Nevertheless, the free tier of ChatGPT is quite powerful. ChatPDF.com also has a free tier and you can even use it without creating an account. You just go to the website and drag and drop your PDF directly in here. This uses the more powerful 4O model even if you don't create an account. So this is a small advantage over the free ChatGPT version, but only if you don't create an account. But with a free account, you can only upload up to two PDFs per day. They can't have more than 120 pages or be bigger than 20 megabytes. I already exceeded this limit, so if I try to upload another file, I get a dialogue that tells me I need to get a subscription. As you can see, the price is 25 euros and I assume also 25 dollars per month, or you can save 60% by getting a yearly subscription. The prices and limits might change over time, but this is at the time of making this video. As you can see, we can send unlimited questions and upload PDFs up to 2000 pages, which is more than enough to upload a whole book, but you can actually upload multiple files and chat with them at once. So technically you can upload more than 2000 pages, but more on that in a moment. Now ChatGBT Plus is cheaper for only 20 bucks a month. They don't have a yearly subscription at the moment where you can save money, but ChatGBT can do more stuff like image generation. So we want to find out if it's worth getting ChatPDF if you specifically need to chat with PDFs as your main task. Going forward, I will use the paid tier of ChatPDF and I will also put a link into the video description where you can create your own ChatPDF account. Uploading a file to chat PDF is pretty simple. You just click the upload PDF button or drag and drop your PDF directly in here. And both chat PDF and chat GBT support different file types, not only PDFs, but also text files, Google Word documents, and even PowerPoint files. To test this, I uploaded this air fryer instructions manual. And the first thing you will notice on chat PDF is that we have the side by side view, where we see the whole PDF on the left side and the chat on the right side. This is very useful, especially with the citation links that chat PDF provides, but more on that in a moment. We also get some questions, suggestions, and what's funny is that the greeting message is in Dutch, I guess, because this is a multi-language instructions manual. But if I ask a question in English, it will continue in English. Uploading files to ChatGBT works very similar. You either click this attachment button or again you just drag and drop your PDF into this input field. Now I exceeded the upload limit with my free account, but I have this other active chat where I already uploaded the file. So that you can see how this looks. Here I uploaded the PDF, but ChatGBT doesn't have a side-by-side -side view. We can't see the PDF itself, we can only see the chat. Okay, let's start asking it questions and I've already prepared something. I started with a very general question. I just want to cook a few burgers, how do I do it? And I expect the AI to find the relevant information and give me instructions that I need to get started. When we compare the response on chat PDF with the responses on both the ChatGPT free and the plus version, you will see that they are pretty similar. They basically said the same things and they also use roughly the same structure, which makes sense because chat PDF uses ChatGPT 4.0 under the hood. So the models you're using are the same and the instructions are also pretty exact. It mentioned that I have to install the CRISPR plates, which is important, or that I should avoid having my food overlapping, which is all mentioned in this instructions manual in different places. 
Now the difference between chat PDF and chat GBT is that on chat PDF we get these citation links automatically, which we can click and they bring us to the page where the AI got the information from. For example, it brings me to page 16, but you can see that it calculates the pages wrong. I assume this is because those are double pages. There is always two pages per one sheet of paper basically, but this will work correctly if you actually only have one page per page. It also jumped to the, I guess, French instructions, but you can't really blame it because they all say the same thing, just in different languages, so it picked one of them and jumped to the instructions. ChatGPT doesn't do any of that, it doesn't give you the page numbers, but what I tried is asking it specifically, list all the pages you used to create this information. And it gave me a list of page numbers, but as you can see, I tried it two times and it gave me completely different page numbers two times, so this doesn't seem to be very exact. Chat PDF usually is pretty exact, but again only if your pages are structured properly. Next I tried a more specific question, my food is burned, what did I do wrong? And there is information about this in the menu, as you can see here, why is my food burned? And I now expect the AI to find this specific information and give me an answer. Again, the results between ChatGPT and ChatPDF are very similar. They are both complete and they are both structured in the same way. But again, we have these very useful citation links in ChatPDF. And each paragraph in the list has their own citation links. Next, I wanted to test image recognition. So I asked ChatPDF where is the air intake went placed on this unit. And as you can see on this image, the air intake went is placed here on the front and the sides. But ChatPDF answered they are located on the back and the side of the unit. So this is plain wrong. Next, I asked it if the handles on the drawers, these ones here, are vertical or horizontal. And I specifically told it to look at the images. And then it told me that it doesn't have the capability to view images in a PDF. So the images in here will not be recognized. Then I tried the same with ChatGPT, but again, the answers were wrong. And even when I asked it to look at the images, it gave the wrong answer. It said the drawers were horizontal, but as you can see, they are vertical. My guess is that ChatGPT probably can't look at images in PDFs either and this is probably why ChatPDF doesn't do it too, because they use ChatGPT under the hood. Next let's look how they handle multiple files. So in ChatPDF you can create a folder and in here you can upload multiple PDFs. I uploaded these three books which are very large files. And then instead of clicking on an individual file you can click on the folder. This way we can chat with all these three files at once. On ChatGPT, again, you just drag and drop your files in here. This works as well, but the free tier could only take two of the three books, which is still a lot. But you don't have these limits with either ChatPDF or ChatGPT Plus if you have a paid subscription. Okay, first I asked it to give me a brief summary of each uploaded book, which it did in both cases. But I don't know how much of this information is actually drawn from the PDF itself or just from the general knowledge that the AI has by reading the internet. That's why I tried a more specific question. I asked it, what was the name of the advisor who convinced Genghis Khan to not destroy China? Because this is mentioned in 48 Laws of Power. Let's look at chat PDF first. It gave a very concise answer and it mentioned the name, Yellow Chutzai. And again, it gave citation links. Let's see if they are correct. Yeah, it brings me to the correct book out of these three, 48 Laws of Power, and here is Chutzai mentioned. So this is great. ChatGPT also gave me the answer, but I noticed that Yellow Chutzai is spelled differently than it is in the book. Chat PDF gave me the exact spelling, ChatGBT gives me a different spelling, so my suspicion was that ChatGBT didn't actually get this information from the PDF, but from its general knowledge. So I asked it, how is the name spelled in the book? It generated two different responses and neither of them could give me the answer. Also, the answer it gave me is much more lengthy, with a lot of information I don't really care about. Chat PDF was much more specific. Okay, before we get to the final summary, let's also take a look at some other features. So Chat PDF has this AI Scholar tool, with which we can search through and summarize research papers, which can be quite useful for academic work. Let's ask it the question, does red meat cause cancer? The research says yes, I personally think it doesn't, but let's see. So on the left, we have all these different research papers it found, and on the right, we have a summary. 
pretty cool, but there is no chat functionality. So we can't ask follow-up questions. Maybe they add this feature in the future, maybe not. I would say it's a nice to have feature, but probably not essential for most people. Next, let's talk about security. So chat PDF explicitly mentions that all the data you send there is encrypted and it also is encrypted while it's stored. So no one of this company should be able to read your PDFs but they use ChatGPT under the hood. So we also have to look at ChatGPT's data handling policies, right? ChatGPT has some information on that. They do use your data for training purposes by default, but you can opt out. There are some instructions here on this page. However, this means they are able to read your data. So it's not encrypted while it's stored on ChatGPT's servers. So employees of ChatGPT should be able to A, see the messages you send to ChatGPT and even look into the files you upload there. For most people, it's probably not a big deal, but you should avoid sending sensitive data there, like your passwords or personal information or company secrets. What about mobile usage? ChatPDF doesn't have a dedicated mobile app, but you can still use this tool on your mobile phone via the web browser. ChatGPT, on the other hand, has a dedicated mobile app that you can download. I think the difference doesn't matter too much, but if a native mobile app is important to you, then you will only find this with ChatGPT. Okay, let's summarize. Which one should you get? Chat PDF, Chat GPT Plus, or one of the free tiers? Chat PDF is much more precise with large amounts of text. It always found the specific text passages and it provided these useful citation links that bring us directly to the page where this information was found. The side-by-side -side view is also very useful because you always have the PDF in front of you. The AI Scholar feature is a nice to have gimmick, depends on what kind of work you're doing. But ChatGPT Plus has more features. You can upload images, it can generate images and some other stuff like browsing the web and they are adding new features all the time. I think you should get Chat PDF if you work with large amounts of text and if you need to be very exact in your research. So if you want to chat with a research paper, for example, then Chat PDF is clearly superior. Or if you want to chat with a book, because it finds the specific locations of each piece of information, much better than ChatGPT Plus did it. But if you don't need to be that exact, if it doesn't really matter what page the information is found on, or if it gets the information from the internet instead of the book, then you can use ChatGPT instead. I would not recommend it for academic work, but for most people who also want to use some other stuff like like image generation, ChatGPT is enough. Again, the link to ChatPDF is in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more AI tool reviews and then I hope I see you in the next video. Take care.